Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Truth Seekers Podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true, and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker, and if you are too, then you've come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. I am just so excited to share today's Bible story with you. I think you are going to love it as much as I do. If you've been listening, then you know in our last episode, we learned about the judges that God raised up to deliver the Israelites whenever they were invaded by raiders from other countries. You see, the Israelites had started worshiping false gods. We learned about the false god Baal and how he was the main god that the Canaanites had worshipped before the Israelites entered the land. We learned how the Israelites did not drive out all of the Canaanites from the land, and so Baal worship was allowed to continue. We learned how an entire generation of Israelites grew up not knowing the Lord, and so they turned to Baal and began worshiping him instead of the one true Lord. After Deborah had delivered the Israelites, as time went by, sure enough, the Israelites again did evil in the eyes of the Lord by worshiping and bowing down to Baal. So God removed his protection from the people, and for seven years, a group of people called the Midianites invaded Israel and oppressed them. Can you say Midianites? The Israelites ran from the Midianites and hid in caves in the mountains and other places. Whenever an Israelite would plant a crop like of wheat or barley, the Midianites would invade and set up their camps on top of the crops and ruin them so they could not grow food. They did not allow the Israelites to even have their own sheep or cattle or donkeys. They did not spare anything for the Israelites. The Bible says there were so many of them that they came up like a swarm of locusts. Do you know what locust is? Locust is like a very large grasshopper that can fly. They damage and eat up crops and they usually travel together in large swarms. The Midianites were like locusts. They destroyed everything the Israelites had. The Midianites were so cruel and they ravaged the land and caused the Israelites much pain and suffering. So much suffering that the Israelites finally cried out to the Lord for help. Would God hear them? Would God help them and deliver them? Of course he would. He had made a covenant to their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that he would be with them and give them the land, that they would become a great nation and be a blessing to the rest of the world. God would fulfill his purpose for Israel. Even though Israel continued to sin, God would not break his covenant. He had a plan. When the Israelites called out to God for help, he sent them a prophet. A prophet is a man or woman who hears from the Lord. A prophet is someone who is very close to God and speaks whatever God tells him to speak. A prophet came to the Israelites and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them from before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Canaanites whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. God was reminding the people that he required obedience from them. Their disobedience had caused much pain and suffering. But God would not leave them in their sin. He would send a deliverer. He would send a judge. Do you remember who God is going to send this time? If you said Gideon, you are correct. One day, Gideon was threshing wheat from his father's crop. 
Do you know what it means to thresh wheat? To thresh wheat means to take the part of the wheat that you can eat and separate it from the rest of the wheat that you cannot eat. Kind of like removing a banana from its peel. You don't eat the banana peel, you only eat what's inside the peel. This was very hard and laborious work. Gideon was threshing wheat in a hidden secret place so that the Midianites would not find him and steal his precious wheat. When this particular day came, all of the sudden, as Gideon was working, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said to him, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Can you imagine how surprised Gideon was to look up and see the angel of the Lord? I would think he would be happy and excited to see the angel of the Lord with him. But do you know what the first thing was that he said to the angel of the Lord? He said, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My family is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Then the Lord said something wonderful to Gideon. He said, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites together. Gideon said to the Lord, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait for you to return. So Gideon went in, prepared a young goat, and made some bread without yeast. Putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot, he brought them out and offered them to him under the oak tree. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the bread without yeast and place them on this rock and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. With the tip of the staff that was in the angel of the Lord's hand, he touched the meat and the bread without yeast. And do you know what happened next? All of the sudden, a large flame came up from out of the rock and consumed all the meat and the bread. And then the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it really was the angel of the Lord, he shouted, O oh, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But then the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, the Lord is my peace. That same night, the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd. I want you to tear down your father's altar to Baal and build a proper altar to the Lord your God on the top of this height. I want you to offer the bull as a burnt offering. You see, even in Gideon's own family, there was idol worship. Before God could use Gideon as a deliverer of Israel, he had to tear down the altar to Baal in his own family. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But Gideon was afraid of what his father and family might do if they found out he was tearing down their altar to Baal. So he did it at night while they were sleeping rather than in the daytime. In the morning, when the men of the town got up, there was Baal's altar completely destroyed. They asked each other, Who did this? When they carefully investigated, they were told, Gideon, son of Joash, did it. The men of the town demanded of Joash, Bring out your son. He must die because he has broken down Baal's altar. 
but Joash protected his son Gideon. He said to the men, If you really believe that Baal is a god, then let Baal deal with Gideon. If Baal is real and has real power, he can do to Gideon what he wants. So that day they called Gideon Jerub Baal, saying, Okay, let Baal deal with him because he broke down Baal's altar. Now you and I know that Baal is not real, and Gideon had obeyed the one true and living God, and nothing or no one could harm him for obeying the Lord. And because Gideon had obeyed the Lord and destroyed the altar of Baal, suddenly the Spirit of God came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet and called men from all throughout Israel to follow him. Now Gideon wanted to make extra sure that God was going to be with him when he fought the Midianites. So Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised, look, I will place a piece of wool fleece on the threshing floor where I have threshed the wheat. If there is dew or drops of water only on the piece of wool in the morning and the rest of the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. When Gideon woke up the next morning, he squeezed all of the water out of the fleece of wool, an entire bowlful, while the rest of the ground was dry. But Gideon, well, he had to be extra, extra sure that God was going to be with him. So he said, God, Do not be angry with me, but let me just ask one more request. Allow me one more test with the wool fleece. This time, make the fleece dry and the ground covered with dew. That night, God did it. When Gideon woke up the next morning, only the wool fleece was dry and the rest of the ground was covered with wet dew. Well, Gideon could have no doubt about it now. God was going to be with him when he went to fight against the Midianites. Early the next morning, Gideon and all his men camped at the spring of Harad. The camp of the Midianites was just north of them in the valley near the hill of Morah. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men for me to deliver Midian into their hands. Wait, what did the Lord just say? Too many men? How is that possible? Wouldn't Gideon need as many men as he could find to fight against the Midianites? Weren't the Midianites as numerous as locusts? But God said to Gideon, In order that Israel may not boast against me that her strength had saved her, announce now to the people, Anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. Do you know how many men turned around and left in fear? 22,000 men. That's a lot of men to leave. That was more than half the men that were with Gideon. Only 10,000 men remained with Gideon. Maybe Gideon thought, well, at least I still have 10,000 men left to help me fight. But the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many men. Take them down to the water. And if I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, Separate those who lap the water with their tongues like a dog from those who kneel down to drink with their hands. Three hundred men bent down and lapped the water with their tongues. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. Did you hear that? Out of thirty-two thousand men, there were only 300 men left to fight. I wonder if Gideon was starting to get nervous. 
But nonetheless, he sent the rest of the Israelites to their tents and kept the three hundred men with him. Now Gideon looked down on the camp of the Midianites below him in the valley. During that night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, go down against the camp, because I am going to give it into your hands. If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura and listen to what they are saying. Afterward, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So Gideon and Pura, his servant, went down to the outpost of the camp. Gideon and his servant quietly snuck up to one of the campsites and listened as a man began to tell about his dream. He said, I had a dream. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend said to him, This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, the Israelites. God has given the whole camp of Midianites into his hands. Well, when Gideon heard this dream and its interpretation, he worshipped God and he returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Dividing the three hundred men into three separate groups, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them with torches inside. Wait, is that right? Empty jars? How are they going to fight the Midianites with empty jars? Watch me, Gideon told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp blow yours and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. So Gideon and the three hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp. They held their torches of fire inside the empty jars so that the Midianites could not see them coming. In the other hand, they held their trumpets. Suddenly, when Gideon gave the signal, they blew their trumpets and broke the jars. Grasping the trumpets in their right hands and the torches of fire in their left hands, they shouted, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon! Not one man had to move. Every one of the 300 men stood their ground with the fire in their hands. And when the Midianites looked out into the darkness, all they could see were torches of fire and all they could hear were shouts and trumpets blasting. They did not know that there were only 300 men out there. For all they knew, there were thousands of Israelites coming after them. So they began to run and cry as they ran. The Lord caused them to become confused and run into each other and fight each other. And the whole Midianite army began to flee and run to the borders of Israel. But Gideon sent messengers to all the men living in those areas and called on them to come down and capture the Midianites as they tried to escape. So the Midianites were defeated that day and the leaders of the Midianites were captured, all because the Lord did it through Gideon's obedience. I told you you would love this story today. Isn't God amazing? What are some truths you learned from this story today, True Seekers? In this story, we learned that God wants us to rely on Him completely for the victory in our lives. Gideon could have used all 32,000 men and won the battle, but God wanted Gideon and the Israelites to rely on his power, and so he only allowed Gideon 300 men. With only 300 men, it would have been impossible to defeat the enemy in their own strength, but they had to rely and trust in God's strength to help them win. God asks the same of you. But you might say like Gideon, I am small and little. How can God use me? You might say, I am weak and get scared easily. How can you use me, God? But do you know what? God comes to you and he says to you, just like he said to Gideon, don't be afraid, mighty warrior. He calls you a mighty warrior. Dear true seekers, In the strength of the Lord, you are a mighty warrior, not in your own strength. 
Only by his power and by his might can you do the things he asks of you to do. He will never ask you to do something that he will not give you the power to do in his strength. Don't be afraid, mighty warriors. God is with you. If you'd like to read today's story in your Bible, you can find it in Judges chapter 6 and 7. Let me pray with you before we go. Dear Father, we thank you that you deliver us from our enemies. Our enemies might be things like fear or anger or pride or selfishness, but you have called us mighty warriors. You come and live inside of us by the power of your Holy Spirit, and you give us the strength to defeat the enemy. Thank you for giving us the victory and for always being with us. We never have to fear. We love you and bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for listening today. And thank you so much for your kind reviews. It has been such a blessing to read what you are saying about the podcast. I am so glad it is a blessing to you. If you would like to support the podcast, your five-star reviews help it to be circulated and found by others who need to hear and learn about God too. Thank you so much for your support. I look forward to our time together next week.